Hey, welcome back to Paul's Projects. Today's project is going to be, uh, this is my G-Tech uh, A20M 3D printer. And it's dual extrusion, so it'll spit out um, two different filaments. Not at the same time, you could mix them, I guess which would be at the same time. And, or you could do one or the other. The problem is, is that this uh, hot end here sucks. Um, if you're doing one color only, it's actually not bad. The print quality is fairly decent. Um, the problem lies when you try to use two filaments. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It jams up constantly. At least I've had that problem in the past. So I'm gonna be uh, upgrading this to a E3D uh, Chimera. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Uh, hot end. So that's what I'm gonna be working on today. So follow along. If you have one of these printers and you want to uh, do this upgrade yourself, uh, hopefully this will help you out. So let's get started. First thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, disassemble the original hot end. There's gonna be two screws here on the front and there's two on the back that you'll need to take off. Next thing you need to do is disconnect all of the connectors. I actually found that it's easiest to just take this little board off that that allow you to get the actual cables out. Uh, once you've got the original hot end completely disassembled, uh, we can install the new one. Uh, this is the mount uh, that you 3D print and uh, it screws in using the same screws into the same mounting holes. Okay, at this point, your setup should look something like this. Uh, we've got both uh, heat brakes installed, but not tightened down, obviously. And we're gonna work on wiring these up. And at this point, you can reinstall the little breakout board that's on the back side. We'll be able to use uh, some of these connectors still for the, one of the extruders. Now we're getting ready to wire up one of the heater cartridges. Don't actually wire it up like this. I'm gonna cut in from the future and explain why. Um, one modification I'm gonna to have to do is, uh, initially I had these just in there like that, and this snapped in the back. Problem is, is when it came here, it's hitting uh, the back of this rail, and it was like freaking out. So, I'm gonna take this out, I'm just gonna clip these ends off and just use the bare wires inside wire that in here and then that should give me a little more flexibility hopefully. Okay the wiring on the back of this should look like this. Um, so we can only plug in one of the heater cartridges and thermistors to the back of this board. So whichever side you decide to do, you're going to plug the heater cartridge here, the thermistor goes right next to it. I've just got it plugged in with the connector that's already on the cable and then I've zip tied it to this uh, connector so it doesn't come out. And then beyond that, you've just got your two fans that are up here plugged into this board as well. And then obviously the main cable that goes back to the main board uh, down below. Down below is where we're going to plug in our second uh, heater cartridge and thermistor for the second extruder. So we will do that now. You're gonna feed the heater cartridge and thermistor wire down through the top, uh, this hole right here. Okay, we got the bottom of the printer open here. Obviously, make sure your power is disconnected. Um, you're gonna find the second stepper motor. And as you can see, most of the pins on this plug are not used. Uh, this is just driving the second stepper motor and uh, the other uh, pins are used for a second uh, heater cartridge. So. You're only going to be using four of these pins. Uh, the second from the right, top and bottom, are pin eight, nine, and that's where you're going to plug your heat heater cartridge into, which is these. And then pins A and B, which are the ones all the way on the right here, is where your thermistor will go, which is this one. Pol polarity on these do does not matter, so we just have to get these hooked up to that. So let's do that now. When you're all wired up, it should look something like this a little hard to see but put your wires in there like that okay 
So here's the firmware we're going to open up. Uh, once you have this downloaded, open Marlin. And then you're going to find uh, Marlin. I think it's uh, INO or something like that. Either way, you, you'll just see this um, logo or icon, and you'll know that's the right one to click on. So we're going to double click on that, which is going to open our Arduino IDE. If you do not already have uh, Arduino IDE, uh, just Google it, download it. Um, it's free. It's really handy to use, and this is how we're going to uh, change some stuff for uh, the firmware to make our new Chimera, Chimera Hoddens work, and we can also upload it from here. So, so the only thing we need to change in here is once you have this open, let me open this all the way. You're gonna go up to this tab up to the top, and you're gonna find uh, configuration.h. And we're going to be doing all of our work inside of here, uh, for the most part. <clears throat> so I will, uh, I will link this uh, firmware down in the description, so you can just use this if you want. But if you want to use a newer version of Marlin, um, or you just want to do this yourself, um, I'll show you what you need to change at least. So, uh, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come down here to this section, and by default this will say extruders, and it'll say one. We need to change that to two. That's the first thing. So just change that to a two instead of a one. Uh, I'm gonna come down a little bit farther. Now, for the A20M and probably for the A10M, I believe is what it is. Uh, this will be enabled. It's it's mixing extruder. Um, if this is enabled in any way whatsoever, this your current Chimera system will not work. So what I ended up, I fought with this quite a bit, but I basically just commented out this whole section here. Um, Normally, um, as long as the define part is uh, commented out, it won't work. And then I would hit compile, and then I would get some errors. And wherever it showed me errors is what I, I would comment out that section to. So basically, I was trying to comment out anywhere in this whole program that um, this mixing extruder was enabled in some way. For whatever reason, it should, when you comment out define, it should just not, it should work just fine. But for some reason, I kept getting weird errors, so I had to go through and comment a bunch of stuff out. But either way, if you end up doing this yourself, just make sure mixing extruder is commented out so it's not enabled. And you may have to go through the program um, if you get errors while you compile and comment out those sections as well. Um, to comment them out, it's real easy. You just put these uh, dashes in front of the lines like that. Or you can do a dash and a uh, star at the beginning and then a... Uh, dash and start at the end of what you want and it'll come out the whole thing instead of having to go you know slash slash all the way down so okay so that's the second thing you need to do um, so that's done there we're gonna come down here uh, where it says uh, temp sensor uh, by default um, it'll look like this it'll say zero this is what it's gonna look like by default we want to change it that to five and the second one to five as well and basically what this is doing, if you look up here, um, we're telling the firmware what type of thermistor uh, we're using. So five, we're gonna be using this one, and one is the default one. So uh, that's done. Um, you may have to come down here and just change the max heat temp to 285 on both of them for uh, both your extruders. And I think, that's the all the main ones. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else in here. Need to change. Don't believe so. I think that's everything. So once that's done, um, you can save it, which I have, and then I basically you'll just need to hook uh, your printer up to your computer wherever you're using your Arduino, and then you'll basically come down here to processors. You're gonna check and use mega uh, 2560 uh, your port is going to be whatever your computer is plugged into and once those are selected then you just hit the upload and it will upload it to your printer make sure your printer is on by the way and then once that's done um, I'll show you what your printer should look like after it's done once your firmware is updated uh, you should see two uh, hot end uh, icons if you do not see uh, two and you only see one, then your mixing extruder section is probably not commented out correctly. So go back and redo that and try again. All right, so now we need to just make sure that our hot ends will actually get hot. 
So if you go into your settings to control and temperature, and then we can turn on our nozzles one at a time. You can turn all the way up to the max of 270. Even though the firmware is technically set at 285 by default, it will always be 15 degrees less than what the firmware is set at. Um, if you don't have a thermal imaging camera like I do, you can literally just take a piece of uh, filament and stick it down in the hole and just see if it'll uh, extrude out. But once I know both of them are working, uh, it's time to hot tighten the nozzles. So you're going to do this on both of them. Um, so this one, the left nozzle is really hot right now. It's maxed out. I'm tightening that and I did the same thing on the other one. Okay, we've got everything wired up. <clears throat> we've uh, got the firmware updated and we've hot tightened our nozzles. Um, the only thing we need to do is level these, level the nozzles to the bed. Um, the wiring on here is, obviously it doesn't look amazing. So uh, what I would do if yours happens to look like mine, is just raise it up to you know the, the upper limits and make sure that your cables aren't gonna be strained in any ways. These work right now. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but is what it is. So I'm gonna bring it down to level the nozzles so you're going to bring it down till one of the nozzles is at least touching the bed and then whichever nozzle is not touching the bed you're going to loosen with the two side grub screws and lower it till it touches the bed so in theory they both should be touching the bed uh, evenly so we know that they're level with each other and once the nozzles are level and tightened down, then we can go through and do a basic uh, bed leveling. Now it's time to do a print. So basically I just started and I did a calibration cube print with each nozzle individually just to make sure that they were working correctly, which they were, which is good. Okay, so these are the different calibration cubes I printed. The blue one I printed with the stock extruder you can see there's quite a bit of layer lines in there you can see wasn't the worst thing in the world but not too bad and then i did these two with the uh new chimera upgrade with uh, each extruder individually black might be a little difficult to pick up on camera but it looks pretty good a little bit of ghosting in there which i think i can fix with some um, another upgrade down the road. The next thing to do is make a calibration print um, so that I can make sure that both the extruders are uh, offset correctly. So when I print with two colors, um, they actually print where they're supposed to be printing. That's way off. Okay, in order to fix the offset, um, we're going to do that. I use Cura, and I believe you can do this in uh, Slicer as well, or probably any Slicer, but this is what I use. Um, so in order to offset the uh, second extruder from the first one so that when it prints with two colors, it prints uh, in the right places, you're going to come up to Preferences, Configure Cura, you're going to go to Printers, select your printer, and then Machine Settings. And then under your extruder one and extruder two, you should only have to update this on one. But on mine, um, I've done negative 40 millimeters um, in the X, which is side to side. And then I had to bump my Y just a tiny bit. And I think that's because the mount I have is a little bit warped. I made it out of PLA, which probably should be in a different material, but um, I moved it that much and it seemed to work just fine. Um, you may or may not have to move yours this much. Um, I had kind of messed around in some of the firmware, so I think some of my offsets may be different in this firmware as well. But um, so yours may not be even negative 40, it may be negative 20. I don't know. And that's all you got to do. And then it was time to do an actual print. This is a 3D. Benchy that's multicolored.
Okay. Let's put this. Well, it's not too bad. It's not about breaking it. And this is the final result. It's not perfect. There's a, a few uh, little areas where it could probably be tweaked a little better. But this was after a lot of trial and error. And when I mean a lot, I mean a lot of trial and error. I had gone through several uh, iterations, uh, trying different settings, tweaking some stuff. And eventually got a result, but it definitely took some time, as you can see. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to watch more of these projects, Feel free to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.